Good morning to those in the Americas. Good evening to those in Europe. And um, for the rest of the people in Asia and Australasia, like myself, it is the middle of the night. So, okay, what I wanted to do was create um, a presentation of something that has been sort of a question in my mind of have we really improved over the years? And we've got a lot of data going right back to 1998. And I just thought it would be interesting to go and have a look and understand what the, what the net result is and then go further deeper into that to understand, well, what are the um, attributes that have contributed to those results? So I've got a picture here of my version of a balanced scorecard. So I want to emphasise that uh, productivity is only one aspect of what I'm talking about today. So, you know, defects, customer satisfaction on time, on budget and time to market are all very important. And depending on the customer, depending on the industry, that rating of importance changes quite a bit. So today I'm just talking about productivity and it is important to uh, measure productivity because if we want to have an impact of um, improving the, the defects that are delivered to production, that will have an impact on productivity. So it's, under, it's good to understand um, what are the impacts of changing the other parameters as well. Okay. So graphing, it's one thing to just graph the data, but uh, looking at the reason why the data is saying what it is is a, a much greater task. And, and I am no statistician. I have just worked with quite simple, uh, using the median of uh, all of the data that we've got, and we do have a lot of data. Uh, there might be some other uh, light bulbs that come off, that come out of some work that some other people do uh, with their statistics. And, and I'm looking forward to that because there is a little bit of work in progress now. So what comparing uh, productivity today to 1998 might not be relevant because business expectations of the software development industry have changed and the requirements have changed dramatically over time. So all these, need, all these things need to be taken into consideration. But the real question is, are we in a better place now and do we serve our businesses better? So today, measurement today in an agile environment has serious pushback, but how do we know that we're serving the business better? So the relative importance of other measures will change over time uh, as they do even within the last couple of years. So as I go through the data, there are issues that arise and I'll try to compare year on year, but with a mix of data from different uh, attributes. And even if you have your own data, you'll still have this um, problem. And I'll try to adjust for that and so we can get a more accurate assessment on the big question, have we really improved? Here it is, the graph. Year on year, from 1998 to 2000, the orange bar is the number of projects. The blue bar or the blue line is productivity. And you can see it's just sort of going up and down over time. We've got quite a lot of projects. The minimum we have is about 200 and something, 206, I think it is. And the maximum is uh, up here in 2004 with 658. It sort of not doesn't really look like it's improving. And there's this massive spike in 2012. So that's a big question. What happened there? Why is 2012? I've uh, got a really high hours per function point. And I just want to clarify too that I do interchange the terms PDR and hours per function point. Now, to me, they mean the same thing. And I know that um, I've had a little bit of criticism there in the past for using that term PDR, but I do mean hours per function point. Okay. So let's have a look 
2012, what happened there? So I did a little bit of investigation myself and discovered that in 2012, there was a lot of uh, projects in the medical and healthcare sector here. So that they, in 2012, that actually contributed 54% to the projects in 2012. So here is the productivity again, the blue line, and medical and healthcare productivity is by far a great, greater hours per function point than any other industry. And the number of projects is not a lot of projects, but they do have a really high um, hours per function point. So we wanted to investigate why, why further for that medical um, area. And I discovered that the medical has a very high um, team size or median team size in comparison to the other industries. So the, the, the bars represent the team size and you can see medical is much, much higher than anything else. Why it has a high team size, I don't know, but that's, that's what it did have at that time. And when we look at team size, compared to productivity, you can see over time that the team size follows productivity, especially in that spike. But the rest of the way, it's, it's you know, loosely follows um, productivity. Uh, in 2016, you'll note that 2016 is missing from the graph. We didn't have any projects that actually submitted um, team size. Okay, so now I've sort of explained what's happened with that spike in 2012. So I'm going to sort of go from 2013 or since 2013 onwards to analyse like the last six years, seven years, have we really improved in the last seven years? Okay, so looking at 2014 to 2020, uh, we've got the hours per function point and the number of projects. So we've got a su substantial amount of projects. The minimum is uh, just over 300 and the maximum is just over 600. And the productivity is sort of like slowly being coming down in hours per function point and then a little bit of a, um, a increase in 2020, yeah. So the reason why I've done this is to get rid of that spike for the medical projects. So the next category I was going to do was uh, understand if the count approach had anything to do with the productivity because people will tell me, oh, you can't mix Nesma and Ifpad and Cosmic all together. And I go, oh, okay, maybe, maybe not. But so I thought, well, let's have a look at uh, what we've got in terms of those three count approach. And there are other count approach as well, but this is the predominant data that we have from 2014 onwards. So what we have here is just a, a graph of how many projects we've got in each year for the different count approach. So for uh, COSMIC, which is the orange line, you'll see we've got very little projects in 2014 and 15, really only um, a decent amount in 2016 and 17, and then not much in 18 and 19. With uh, IFPUG, which is the blue line, we've got good number of projects throughout all of the years. And NES NESMA, which is the green line, has been pretty much steadily increasing with decent amount of projects, you know, from 2017 onwards. So we've got a good amount of projects there. When we look at the PDR for the three different count approach, you'll see that COSMIC has a, um, a higher PDR, being hours per function point, um, than IFPUG and NESMA. And really this has nothing to do with the count approach. It could be that COSMIC is being used for um, smaller projects, uh, 
there's a whole lot of reasons why um, Cosmic would have a higher uh, PDR than the other two um, count approach. So let's have a look at our results. We can see for the hours per function point here that NESMA has improved from 2017 to 2020. So these are the projects that are submitted to our repository that have the count approach NESMA. And we'll go into that a bit further as to why um, the NESMA um, projects have improved. We only have two data points for COSMIC really because we can't really look at the others because there's not a lot of data there and we can't draw any conclusions from two data points. The IFPUG um, hours per function point projects have steadily increased over time. And again, we'll go into um, what other factors there are that have impacted both NESMA and um, IFPUG. Right, just having a look at the uh, functional size and what is the trend for functional size. So we categorise our projects into, and you'll see the, the graph up here on the top, extra small, extra, extra small, so on, medium one, medium two, large. And then down here is the actual data. So you can see we've got substantial number of projects for each of those categories. Except for extra large, we've only got 20 projects for extra large, which is greater than 3,000 function points. The hours per function point is decreasing generally pretty much and is the best. Let's ignore extra large because there's only 20 in there. It's pretty much the best for large. So the projects for 1,000 to 3,000 function points are producing the best result. Now, this is a surprise to me because I have always thought that the projects that were probably in the medium one category, 100 to 300 function points, were produced the best result. So when I looked at this data and discovered that it's um, now it's coming up that larger projects are producing the best result in the data for the last six years only, uh, then that was a bit of a surprise. When I delve deeper into the different count approach, I discovered that if for large projects, so we've got 309 uh, large projects, the projects that have been submitted, only if PUG have only 14 of those, NESMA have 276 and COSMIC have 19. So we can see that Yes, larger projects have um, produced a, a better result. And, and the majority of those projects that are submitted by far are NESMA projects. So that is going part way towards explaining why NESMA um, uh, is producing a, a better productivity in the latter years. Okay, looking at functional size. So from I've got, I've copied the previous graph here so you can um, remember that. And basically what we said was that the best productivity is coming from the larger projects. So here we have the functional size year on year. The, and overlaid with that is the, sorry, the number of projects is in the, the bar and then the functional size the median functional size is the um, blue line. So we've had an increase in our functional size, uh, just general sort of increasing, except for 2020. So 2019 was the, the peak. And in the previous slide, we've talked about how larger projects produce the best productivity result. Even though this uh, functional size is still only 400, 424, I think it is, the, it is, it is by far the highest median functional size of all of the uh, years. And that could be a contributing factor towards why 2019 has 
improved. So it's just a bit of an observation that we are trending towards larger projects. Okay, so now we get back to the different productivity trends for different count approaches, the Ben Cosmic, IFPUG and NESMA. And it's obvious um, from the data as to why there has been variations. So when you look at the PDR changes for the count approach versus the functional size, so NESMA in the green here has been increasing in functional size over the time and has been decreasing in PDR over the time. Um, if PUG has been pretty steady in functional size and sort of just gone up and down a little bit um, over time and Cosmic I can't really draw any conclusions from. But this is important that the, the NESMA has increased in functional size and the productivity has reduced. And this has got nothing to do with whether that, um, you know, whether, whether one count approach is better than the other. It's just the data that we have received um, in the last few years. Okay, back to team size. I wanted to look at the team size and analyze whether we could draw anything from the number of projects that we had and the productivity and the functional size. So you can see from this um, uh, chart here that we've got a good amount of projects for team size three to four and five to eight. The, the functional size is also increasing quite a lot, as you would expect, you know, the height, the great greater the size of the team, the greater the size of the, um, the project that they would deliver, you would hope. But the hours per function point is slightly less, say 5.9 versus 6.6 .6 for a team size of five to eight versus a team size of three to four. And considerably more uh, functional size delivered. So, the rest of the team size, one, two, and nine to 14, really, they, you know, they, they only have like 50 odd projects in each of them. Not really enough data in my view to draw any conclusions from, but we can see from this chart that the team size um, five to eight does produce um, the slightly better productivity. Okay, now taking a different look at things, which is elapsed time. Uh, there is a trend towards uh, longer projects until 2019 and then in 2020 uh, reducing again. There's sufficient number of projects in each year in this scenario, we've got in excess of 300 or 220 in 2017. Projects are trending towards being longer from just over four months in 2014, moving up to just over six months in 2019, but coming back down in 2020. So the orange bar is the elapsed time, you can see that moving up. And the blue line is the hours per function point or PDR in this case. And it sort of goes up and down, but it is sort of trending down in my view. Okay, I couldn't leave out Agile. Everybody's interested in Agile and there's been a serious pushback on the Agile projects being measured. But this is actually good news. What this is showing is that productivity is improving 
for Agile projects. So when we look at the data here, we can see that up until about 2017, well, it's 2017, we've got 76 projects, but we've got significant data after that. Early on, we don't have a lot of data to draw any conclusions from. And you can see that the elapsed time, and this is months, the elapsed time has increased from seven months up until 10 months, which is quite a long time for an agile project. And the PDR, the hours per function point, has decreased from 7, 5.8, slight increase 6.2 and down to 4.9. So this is very interesting that Agile has improved the size of the, um, the, the length in time of the projects has increased, which I was a little bit surprised about because I would have thought that the Agile was more uh, smaller projects and um, would deliver uh, faster. But we've seen in the data already that our best productivity comes from the projects from 1,000 to 3,000 function points. And, and this is in, probably indicative of the Agile projects as well because they are increasing in time. So we have improved over time, yes to Agile, yes to longer projects, but is that meeting what the business wants? So yes, projects of size 1,000 to 3,000 showing best productivity, projects over five months are showing the best productivity, Agile is improving over time, and we need to marry this with the business objectives. So, and as software developers, we need to inform the business of requests for more functionality or less functionality. What is going to be the impact in terms of productivity to um, the, which translates to cost, but also translates to uh, deliverable dates. So have we improved? Yes, in certain areas. So if you have any questions, um, my email address is there, uh, ceo at isbsg.org, and I would be happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you.